game begins when Mongols have come to Tsushima to invade the land. The 80 remaining samurais are prepared to die fighting to protect Tsushima, even though they are vastly outnumbered. Lord Adachi goes ahead to the Mongols and asks to duel their fiercest fighter. However, the Mongols aren't as honourable as the samurais, so Kotun Khan burns Adachi alive and slices his head off. In response, Lord Shimra, Jin's uncle, signals to attack. In the process, Jin gets shot several times and loses consciousness as Shimra gets captured by the Khan, who is trying to get Shimra to surrender to make it easier for them to invade Tsushima. Jin Sakai awakens to find himself having been treated, so he finds his armour where he meets Yuna, a capable fighter who was looking after him. They together recover Jin's sword. We find out that Yuna saved Jin because the Mongols captured Tucker, her brother. Jin agrees to help her save Tucker once he has saved his uncle. When he goes to confront the Khan though, he gets overpowered and pushed off the bridge into the water. While he was unconscious, Jin remembers how he watched his father die while he was begging for help from Jin. Jin awakens on a shore and uses the direction of the wind to find Yuna. Jin tells Yuna that in order to take the Khan by surprise, he may need to do less honourable things. They discuss people they may need to ask for help from, including Lady Masako, widow of Lord Adachi, and Sensei Ishikawa. Yuna suggests her brother's blacksmithing skills can be useful to scale the Khan's castle walls. Therefore, Jin agrees to make saving Tucker a priority as well. Together, Jin and Yuna liberate a Mongol camp, where Jin performs his first stealth kill, which is considered by samurais to be dishonourable. After they liberate the camp, they find out from a prisoner Tucker's location. Jin finds Sensei Ishikawa and Lady Masako and recruits them to help them free Lord Shimura. Then Yuna introduces Jin to Kenji, a merchant who they use as a distraction to free Tucker and get him somewhere safe. In this safe location, however, the townspeople get attacked by Mongols. Jin protects them and Yuna brands him as a vengeful spirit to the locals. Out in the wilderness, Jin runs into his childhood friend, Ryuzo. While he wants to help Jin free his uncle, his people, the Straw Hats, are starving, but he agrees cautiously. Tucker was able to forge Jin a Kaganawa, or a grappling hook, to help Jin scale the castle walls. Ryuzo enlists Jin's help to free some captive Straw Hats that were being held by the Mongols, but it turns out they were being fed handsomely by the Mongols. The night to free Lord Shimmer from his captivity arrives, but there's no sign of Ryuzo or the Straw Hats. Even so, Ishigawa, Masako, Jin and Yuna enter without them. When Jin reaches a certain point, he is met by Ryuzo, who reveals that there's a bounty on the ghost's head and reiterates that his people are starving. The two of them duel, but Ryuzo then flees. Jin makes his way to his uncle to free him from his captivity. Together, they fight off the remaining Mongols in the area. After, Lord Shimura discourages Jin from continuing down the dishonourable path of the ghost, as it's not the way of the samurai. Yuna now wants to leave Tsushima with Taka, but Shimura says he will only grant them safe passage if they help him retake Tsushima. So Yuna informs them of warriors that would be of help from Yarukawa. Although Lord Shimura thought they wouldn't be of help to him because of him previously silencing their rebellion. But Yuna is from Yarukawa and believes she can get them to join the fight. Jin, Taka and Yuna together make their way to Yarukawa that is surrounded by Mongols. So they sneak in to try to convince them to help Jin if Jin drives off the Mongols. However, they refuse the help as they believe that the Mongols will shift their concerns to the mainland and they do not want to involve themselves with Lord Shimura. On their way out, they run into some Yarakawan men who claim some of their friends were caught raiding supplies. So they help free them and get them back to Yarakawa. Yuna and Jin drink away their nerves that night where Yuna tells Jin of her alcoholic abusive mother, and that being why she ran away with Taka. After defending Yarukawa, Jin was able to get them to agree to help them against the Mongols. 
After this, Jin goes to his hometown to recover his father's armour, the armour of Clan Sakai. Jin asks Yuriko, his family friend, about how to make poison. She reluctantly tells Jin how to make it, but asks him not to change from the good person she knows him to be, as use of poison is further straying away from the samurai code. Jin goes looking for a smuggler by the name of Goro, by orders of Lord Shimra, so that Lord Shimra can get a message to the Shogun that they need reinforcements against the Mongols. Jin and Lord Shimra defends Goro's ship from the Mongols so he can get away. Then Lord Shimra explains to Jin that the letter to the Shogun also asks for Jin to officially become his son and heir. When prepared, Jin tells his uncle he's going to face Ryuzo. However, Yuna and Tucker prepare to leave Tsushima after Yuna helped recruit the people of Yarukawa. Therefore, Jin goes at it himself. But when he arrived, he's met with Taka who wants to help. So Jin gets Tucker to distract some of the men as Jin enters the fort, but Ryuzo was expecting him and has him knocked out. Tucker suspected Jin was in trouble, so he went back to help him and was caught. Both of them were held captive and Koton Khan arrived on the scene and tells Tucker to kill the ghost. But he loyally tried to kill the Khan, but the Khan kills Tucker and decapitates him. Yuna finds out Tucker had gone after Jin so she makes her way to the scene and finds her little brother's dead body. Jin and Yuna bury Tucker. When they make their way back to Lord Shimura, he says to Jin that the Shogun support his decision to adopt Jin. But in the next fight against the Mongols, Jin uses poison stealthily, which is considered a cowardly weapon by the samurai. After the battle was over, Jin tells his uncle stealthily poisoning the enemy would save lives. His uncle responded by saying that it is an act of terror. Then Jin blamed his uncle for the lives lost in the battle, so Shimra smacked Jin. Therefore, Jin went himself and poisoned a group of Mongols and found Ryuzo. From him, Jin finds out that the Khan rode north. Ryuzo begs Jin for forgiveness, but after Tucker's death, Jin refuses. They duel, and Jin kills his former best friend. Lord Shimra imprisons his nephew for going against his wishes and poisoning the enemy. Kenji gets sent by Yuna to free Jin from being shipped off to the Shogun for judgement. On Jin's escape, his loyal horse is shot and gets him as far as possible before collapsing dead. Mongols come across Jin and shoot him with poison arrows and he gets knocked out. He awakens to see Yuna, who had saved him yet again. They discuss how the Mongols are using his poison against him. Jin enlists help from Takeshi, a former love interest of Yuna, and his men at Yuna's request. When scouting out the docks where they plan on taking the fight to the Mongols, Jin and Yuna mention they still need more men. So despite their differences, Jin decided to sneak into his uncle's quarters and leave a letter in the hope they will be able to fight together once more, if not for each other, then for the good of Tsushima. Before the battle begins, Jin and Yuna have an emotional exchange where he makes her promise that if anything goes down, she won't stop fighting. While there is no sign of Lord Shimra or his men at the start, he comes in the middle of the battle, with Jin going after Koten Khan. The two have a duel, but Koten Khan cowers and retreats, sending his men to do his dirty work. After getting rid of them, Jin beat the Khan again and decapitated him after he told him that he and the Mongols will be forgotten. Jin and Yuna find each other on the battlefield after all the bloodshed and take their leave. In the days following, Yuna lets Jin know that his uncle left a message for him, that he wants to meet him at Omi Lake, where they used to spar when he was a child. When they see each other, they make their way to the cemetery of Clan Sakai, where Jin learns the Shogun ordered Lord Shimra to kill him for disobeying his uncle. They reluctantly duel each other, and Jin comes out on top. They say that they will be reunited in the next life, and Jin makes sure that Lord Shimra knows he will be remembered as a great father. Then, Jin performs his final act by the Samurai Code, by granting his uncle's final wish of an honourable death.
Thanks for watching the video, drop a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more story summaries and comment if you would have done my ending or chosen to spare Lord Shimra. Till next time, peace out.